In my previous video, I talked about the network performance testing for Mac Studio's built-in 10 gigabits RJ45 port. If you are interested, check my channel. In this video, let's discuss how I achieve even faster speed. We are going to use two additional adapters. They are both Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabits. The silver one is from CalDigit, black one from OWC. On the screen, you see an official documentation from Apple about link aggregation. I won't cover the details, but in the end, there are two things I want to mention. First, macOS, when it comes to link aggregation, it supports LACP. In different switches, when you configure link aggregation, you can see multiple options. Make sure you choose the LACP. The other one is here. macOS doesn't impose a limit to the number of physical parts that you can add to a bond. This is a very interesting statement. In the end, we will revisit this point. Let's talk about the network diagram we are going to use for this video. In the middle, you see a 10 gigabit switch from Microtik. And in the client side, I have the Mac Studio with the two external adapters. The adapters are connected to Mac Studio using the Thunderbolt 3 cable. And the Mac Studio and the two adapters are connected with the switch using normal Ethernet cable. The switch only support SFP Plus port. To connect the RJ45, I use the transceiver modules. They won't impact performance because this switch is 10 gigabit switch. To connect to the computer, we need a uplink faster than 30 gigabits. Otherwise, this testing doesn't make any sense, right? To make it possible, I use two 40 gigabit DAC cables connected to a Celestica 100 gigabit switch and I configured another link aggregation here so that I have a 80 gigabit uplink to the 100 gigabit switch. And then from this 100 gigabit switch, I have a 100 gigabit DAC cable connected to a Linux virtual machine. And the NIC, I use Connect X4. The main topic for this video is this part. To configure the link aggregation for Mac machine to support higher than 10 gigabit network connection. Let's see how we do it. If you are familiar with the link aggregation configuration, you may know it's recommended that you start from the remote side. In our case, it is the switch. So let's start the link aggregation configuration here in this switch. And then we go back to Mac Studio. Before we move on, there's one more thing I want to mention. With the network speed higher and higher, the jumbo frame settings are more and more important. They may have dramatic impact to your network throughput. In the whole network link, starting from Mac Studio all the way to the Linux virtual machine, I make sure the MTU is set to enabled jumbo frame. This is the configuration user interface for the Microtik switch. I'm in the interface tab and let me switch to bounding. I already configured the link aggregation for Mac Studio, which is the first one. There are several things I want to mention. See the slaves? I selected three free ports, 9, 10, and 11, and the mode I select 802.3 AD, which means LACP, set the MTU as 9000. Remember in the diagram, you see another link aggregation to connect to the 100 gigabit switch, right? Which is this one, the uplink. It has all the breakout SFP plus ports configured. Basically, these eight slaves are just two physical 40 gigabit ports. And similarly, I configure the MTU here. Okay, so these two link aggregations are configured in the Microtik switch. It's time to configure link aggregation in Mac OS. This is the network setting. You can ignore the Wi-Fi and this one. They are not relevant to this video. Focus on the Ethernet, which is the built-in Mac OS 10 gigabit port and CalDigit and OWC. I already connect them to the Microtik switch. You may notice 
for the cal digit and OWC. They are showing the yellow icon and the IP address is self assigned. Why is that? Remember, we just configured the link aggregation in Microtech switch. These two adapters, when they try to connect to the switch, the link cannot be successfully established because the protocol is not correct. The switch requires LACP and the two adapters, they are simply not available of that. So now it's time for us to configure the link aggregation. The way to configure it in macOS is you go to this small icon and choose the very last one manage virtual interfaces because in macOS link aggregation interface is considered as virtual interface. Click the plus button choose new link aggregation and the system automatically lists the ethernet connection interfaces it doesn't show the wi-fi as i mentioned ignore the first one the last three they are the ones we want to configure in this video they are all 10 gigabits connection right and let's give it a super good name let's say 30 gbe create that now you are seeing this interface showing the red color right give it some time it will become green if the switch and the mac os can communicate correctly the racp works you will see this interface showing green color we have a green 30 gigabits connection everything looks good but you may notice in the three active interfaces the one we want to use is the last one it won't work by default the system will simply not use this interface in mac os the way you change the sequence is here select the set service orders you may know if you have physical interfaces mac os is smart enough it will automatically move your higher speed interface to the very first one right but in this case the 30 gigabits interface is virtual one for some reason mac os simply leave it in the end of the sequence so let's manually change it we simply drag it to the top that's it click apply now we have a 30 gigabit interface then let's make sure it has double frame enabled click the interface then advanced go to hardware automatically it's the default value let me switch to manually the mtu let's say jumbo that's it apply before we start validating the speed let me show you the setting in the other end which is the 100 gigabit switch and the linux virtual machine let's check the status in the 100 gigabit switch let me use the serial cable to connect to the switch then let me run the command show interface status this one is the 100 gigabit connection to the Linux virtual machine. As you can see, the operational status is up, speed is 100 gigabit. And the other one, the 80 gigabit link aggregation is configured using this two part, and they are both up and they are using port channel one. Port channel is just another name for link aggregation interface. And the speed, you can see each of them is 40 gigabit. So in total, I have 80 gigabit connection to the Microtik switch. Okay, so this is the status in the 100 gigabit switch. I won't show you the detailed configuration steps. That's out of the scope of this video. The last configuration I want to show you is the Linux machine. I'm showing you the network configuration. The wired link is showing 100 gigabit connection. Now, if you check the detailed information you can see in the identity i already set the jumbo frame that's it because it's using a physical pass through 100 gigabit nic the setting is very simple there's no link aggregation here so natively it has 100 gigabit capacity 
I'm going to use this screen layout for the speed testing. In the lower left, you see the Linux virtual machine window, and I have three terminals open. I will explain why I need three terminals. For the other three black terminals, they are all connected to the Mac Studio, just three different terminal sessions. Go back to the Linux because we are talking about a 30 gigabit link aggregation connection. The way link aggregation work is the hashing algorithm will not split data streams on single host to host connections. To really saturate the capacity, we need multiple connections. I'm using three parallel sessions to connect to the same Linux server, and let's see what's the total throughput we can get. In the three Linux terminals, let me run the three different iPerf3 sessions. If you can see the parameter, I will run them in server mode. For each one of them, I specify a different part number, so they will listen to different part. Start them one by one. Okay, they are up and running. Now in the three Mac Studio terminals, I already typed the command. I will run iperf3 in client mode, connecting to the Linux server. Each one of them use a different port number, and I will keep them run for a long time. That's why I specify the T parameter. Let me start the first one. Okay. 9.9 .9 gigabits, very good speed. Then kick off the second one. Yep, another 9.9. .9. Very good result. And then the third one. Mm hmm. Very good. So you can see they have some fluctuations, but the total throughput look very promising. Let me go to the system monitor in Linux. Let's see what's the total throughput in the Linux side. So you can see it's up and down, but the maximum throughput is 30 gigabits and the lowest is about 2.4. So we are good with this testing. Before ending this video, some final thoughts because we are just talking about three interfaces so if we do a link aggregation it may make sense right but what if you are still not satisfied with 30 gigabits you want more if you use this link aggregation approach remember in the beginning of the video according to Apple's documentation, macOS doesn't limit number of interfaces you can use for link aggregation, right? So let's say for whatever reason you have nine separate adapters, so in total you have 10, 10 gigabits interfaces. Of course, for the Mac Studio, it may not be possible to even connect your nine adapters, but let's assume you are able to do that. In the switch side, you need 10 parts to configure the link aggregation. Some switches, for example, Ubiquiti Unify, they simply don't support more than eight parts in one link aggregation group. For Microtech, I don't know whether it has any limitations, but even if it doesn't, even if you are able to configure a 10 parts link aggregation in your switch, do you really want to do that? Think about the cost. That's my first thought. So this approach talked in this video may only work if you have one or two adapters and you want to use it temporarily to achieve a higher speed network connection. So my second thought is, is there any way to achieve higher network speed? If you search eBay, you can buy some very affordable 100 gigabit PCIe NIC. Unfortunately, we are talking about the Mac Studio. You cannot insert the PCIe card to this chassis. Theoretically, you may be able to just buy a used external GPU box, insert a high-speed NIC, and then the eGPU box can connect to Mac Studio using Thunderbolt. I have never tried that. It's just some wild idea. Of course, whether you can use the NIC may also be determined by whether macOS support the NIC. Okay, thanks for watching.